Well, the high-level diplomatic freeze between Beijing and Canberra came to an end today after Prime Minister Anthony Albanese met and shook hands with the Chinese President Xi Jinping in Bali. It's the first time in six years that an Australian Prime Minister has held formal face-to-face -face talks with the Chinese leader. The last to do so was Malcolm Turnbull back in September 2016. On the sidelines of the G20 summit, the pair began with a handshake, followed by a brief exchange with President Xi striking a more conciliatory tone. China-Australian relations have long been at the forefront of China's relations with developed countries, and they deserve to be cherished by us. In the past few years, China-Australian relations have encountered some difficulties which we do not want to see. Because China and Australia are both important countries in the Asia-Pacific region, we should improve, maintain and develop the relationship between the two countries. It is in line with the fundamental interests of the two countries and is also conducive to promoting the development of peace in the Asia-Pacific region and the world. Since Mr. Prime Minister took office, you have made a number of remarks on China-Australia relations on a number of occasions and have repeatedly said that you will deal with china australia Australian relations in a mature manner. I attach great importance to your opinion. We need to work towards a stable, prosperous and peaceful Indo-Pacific and an international system that is governed by international law and the principles that are enshrined in the United Nations Charter. We have had our differences and Australia won't resolve from our interests or our values. But our bilateral relationship is an important one. And Prime Minister Albanese made further comments after a short closed-door meeting with the Chinese delegation led by Mr Xi. He says it was a positive and constructive discussion. I put forward uh, Australia's position uh, when it comes to the blockages uh, in our trading relationship. I put forward uh, the differences that we have on human rights issues, including Xinjiang. I put forward uh, specifically as well uh, the cases of Chang Lei and Dr Yong. And I also uh, put forward our position on Ukraine and uh, asked that uh, China exercise its influence uh, on Russia, uh, specifically about uh, Russia's threats uh, to use uh, tactical nuclear weapons. I noted uh, that China had called that out and that that is a good thing. Our Global Affairs Editor John Lyons is attending the GT G20 Summit and is with us tonight. John, good to see you. The meeting was very brief, but President Xi really has seemed to strike a very polite tone with the Prime Minister. Yes, Beverly. 30 minutes, though, and uh, President Xi is someone who almost every leader at this meeting is trying to get a meeting with. Um, and there's 20 influential leaders here at the moment, such as Emmanuel Macron and, and Rishi Sunak. So 30 minutes, significant. The fact of the meeting itself, I think, is something of a diplomatic coup for Australia. And it appears to have gone very well, judging by what, some of what Mr Albanese said afterwards. Yeah. Well, let's talk about that a little bit, John. He did uh, make some comments. He also tweeted that Australia will co cooperate where we can, disagree where we must, and engage in our national interests. So what is that going to mean for the relationship going forward? Yes, Beverly. Well, clearly, um, Mr Albanese thought he needed to bring up certain issues, which, of course, were um, not would not have been popular with the Chinese leader, uh, such as the treatment of the Uyghur people. Um, he also brought up the case of the Chinese-Australian journalist Cheng Lei and Dr Yun, the academic. Um, and he did say in that statement, as you say, that there'll be some things that we, where we will need to disagree. But he said there were also quite some areas, such as he said President Xi described the two economies as highly complementary. Um, and in fact, President Xi said that he'd been to every state of Australia at least once um, and had warm, warm memories of that. And in his opening comments, he made a comment about how Mr Albanese appeared to have a very honest and good approach to this, which seemed to be a bit of a, uh, a slap at the previous 
um, coalition government. Um, and they did talk about Taiwan, where Mr Albanese restated Australia's position, which was to support the status quo. Um, climate change came up as well. So it was a fairly broad ranging discussion. Yeah, so it doesn't look like any topic was off limits. But of course, several industries have been targeted by China to some economic cost for the, the country. Um, do you think this is the moment it could change going forward? Well, I think that um, if President Xi has a positive view of this meeting, as it appears is the case, then of course that's the next logical extension of this. Mr Albanese will want to deliver something for his own constituency back in Australia. He will want to get that $20 billion or significant parts of it, which are punitive economic sanctions that China has imposed on our barley and wine and, and various other products. He will want to get that lifted. So the dollar will, in the end, be the issue where Mr Albanese will say, you need to give me something. You need to give our our export is some relief from your sanctions. Yeah. You know, John, as you pointed out, um, Xi is meeting with a number of leaders at the G20. Um, do you think China wanted to take this opportunity to break the impasse between the two nations? I think so, Beverly. I think what's happened is President Xi has recently, as you, as you know, as you've covered on your program many times, has got his third term has clinched a third term from the, the party heavyweights in the Communist Party in China. And having done that, I think a lot of his rhetoric until then was playing to that, to that local domestic audience to try to get that third term. The very hard rhetoric on Taiwan and other issues in Hong Kong. Having secured that, he appears to have come here to Bali wanting to rebuild some bridges. Certainly with the United States, three and a half hours yesterday with President Biden was a significant meeting. And then at half an hour today with Anthony Albanese, there were serious questions about whether today's meeting would go ahead. Um, that would have been something of an embarrassment to the new Australian Prime Minister. So I think President Xi has certainly said, here is an olive branch, let's see where we go from here. Yeah, interesting stuff. Uh, John, good to get uh, your perspective on this. Thanks so much for your time. One of the pressing issues in the challenging relations between the two countries has been the trade sanctions imposed by Beijing. But Anthony Albanese says he doesn't expect trade ties to improve in the short term. Look, we put forward our position and uh, he uh, said that uh, we have highly complementary uh, economies, uh, so we use similar language in that. Uh, I'm but uh, it wasn't, uh, it, it is not that sort of process. This isn't a, a, uh, a, a discussion uh, at, at, a, at, a, uh, at a commercial level. Uh, what it is, the system doesn't work that way. Uh, and uh, it was a very constructive discussion is how uh, I would put it. Australia's position is very clear. I, I put the position clearly uh, firmly uh, but politely and uh, that is uh, what I intended to do and that's what I did. Well, let's get more on that uh, meeting. Peter Harcher is international editor with the Sydney Morning Herald and he is in Bali for the G20 and has been reviewing that meeting. Good to see you Peter. Um, you know we're hearing Anthony Albanese there saying that this wasn't the place to try and make these changes, those sort of trade issues that um, China and Australia have experienced over the last couple of years. But is this a significant start, what we saw today? Yes, I'd say it's a significant second step, actually, because quietly China has been relaxing a couple of the major trade bans it's had on Australia over the last 12 months because it discovered that it needed Australian thermal coal to keep its people warm and its, and its economy running, and it needed Australian wheat to feed its people. So the initial bans on those products have been eased, and now uh, China's actually imported a record quantity, a uh, record tonnage of Australian wheat. Uh, but still, the other bans remained. So what happened today, I think, was, as Albanese said uh, at that press conference that you quoted, uh, this isn't the time when we get specific announcements about those remaining bans. But what you heard today was Xi Jinping, who represents the system on the Chinese side, and he had 
the major ministers on his side of the table for commerce, uh, for trade, uh, for economics, as well as foreign policy. He didn't lecture Australia anymore. He didn't tell us that we were racist. He didn't raise any more the objections that China has been raising for the last couple of years. Instead, he uh, focused on the positive and the critical phrase that you heard Albanese used there was complementary. So Xi Jinping said, uh, Albanese said, I was struck that both of us, Albanese and Xi Jinping, used the phrase highly complementary economies. So that's code for the Chinese leader saying, guys, we need your staff. Uh, and we're going to drop this. We're going to drop these uh, trade bans because we need stuff. So that's the signal to the system. Uh, the system, I now expect over the coming months, will resume trade in those other items. Uh, Australia will have to contribute to that by dropping the World Trade Organization actions that brought against China on a couple of those items. But that's easily done. Yeah, but Peter, if our relationship is only based on us needing your stuff, um, is, is that a good groundwork to begin on or does it need to be more mature than that? Well, in essence, that's all it's ever been. Uh, in essence, you have two fundamentally different systems that believe in an entirely separate universe of beliefs and values that have been brought together in a pragmatic uh, union of economic complementarities. Um, whether it's education and tourism and services, or whether it's uh, hard commodities uh, like energy or soft commodities like food. That's all it's ever been, and everything else uh, has been a pretense. Uh, the goodwill and all the rest of it has been on top of that as, a, as, uh, as essentially a diplomatic necessity. Xi Jinping showed Australia and the world uh, his true face in his last couple of years now realises that it's been overreach uh, and has dumped the entire campaign of intimidation against Australia to meekly now host this polite meeting, which he instigated with the leader of Australia to, uh, in effect, say, look, let's get back to um, let's get back to serving our economic interests. Yeah, let's get back to business. And interestingly enough, in the statement that was put out, he said he wanted Australia to provide a good environment for Chinese enterprises to invest and operate here, which is almost saying, look, we want you to open up. We want, we want to have the open slather that we perhaps had a couple of years ago. Those national interest considerations for the Prime Minister would need to stay in place, would they not? Yes, there's no concession has happened or going to happen from Albanese and his and his government. Uh, you might remember, Bev, the, when the Chinese embassy in Canberra handed over its list of 14 demands on Australia, number one was for Australia to change its foreign investment rules to accept Chinese investment, more Chinese investment, according to what Beijing wanted rather than what Australia wanted. Uh, that, of course, n neither the Morrison government nor the Albanese government has conceded on that or any of the 14 points, which now look like you know, just an embarrassing souvenir or, or a memoir of uh, China's own hubris and arrogance. Uh, so Australia has not budged on that, will not budge on that. The, there will be no relaxation on Chinese investment in Australia. But trade, uh, yes, trade will, will continue and will increase. That's an entirely different kettle of fish. Yeah, and, but one we have to be cautious of, as you say, I said at the start, that we can't necessarily always depend on. It's interesting, too, you know, that there was a long meeting yesterday, of course, with Biden and, and Xi. Um, could we see a shift in this critical relationship? And is it a lot at the moment to do with Xi engaging in a slightly different manner? Uh, yes and yes, I would say. Uh, so on your first point, Bev, uh, where the US and China were really falling headlong into an oncoming uh, confrontation, this is a momentary um, uh, cessation of escalation. It's not a cessation of hostilities in the economic sense, uh, because it was just last week that Xi Jinping uh, told his, his troops, literally, uh, dressed in camouflage uh, fatigues, told his troops to prepare for, for war. And uh, only a week before that, that uh, Joe Biden announced a ban on sales of US high technology computer chips and the high tech gear. All of that stuff remained, that's all continuing. What you saw between Xi Jinping and Joe Biden yesterday 
was a moment where they said, okay, we've got all this going on, that's enough. Uh, we don't want it to get any worse. So, so the, the onrushing uh, confrontation has now been postponed and not cancelled, it's just postponed. Uh, and that will have knock-on effects through, through the US system, but also the US alliance system, including Australia and its relations with China. And on your second point, Xi Jinping now, uh, so let me to take a step back. When COVID hit, uh, Xi Jinping decided that the best way to uh, defend China against the accusation that it had infected the world was, uh, was offense. And it then struck this very aggressive uh, tone with the world, the, the famous uh, wolf warrior rhetoric. Um, and that phase is now finished. Um, nobody is asking China for reparations or inquiries anymore. That's all over. And Xi Jinping now wants to uh, uh, stabilise uh, China's relations. So that is exactly what's happening. Yeah, but he has secured his third term, which seems to give, which seems to have relaxed him to go to this next phase potentially. But his ambitions remain, as you've just pointed out, and uh, we don't, we can't necessarily believe that that he's not going to press those claims uh, in the next couple of years. Oh no! On the contrary, I mean his his major credential uh, for the leadership, his major source of legitimacy now. Chinese system, uh, with the uh, economic stalling that's going on and the real estate property market collapse that's underway, his main source of success, pride and legitimacy now is his nationalism badge. And that involves um, principally Taiwan. Uh, and he made that very clear to Joe Biden yesterday. That is a red line for China. Do not uh, try to uh, change uh, the status quo, do not try to defend Taiwan, do not try to intervene. Uh, and Joe Biden essentially said, we're going to respect the status quo. So um, that was that, that was the primary statement of nationalist interest and sentiment. And uh, it then spills over into all the other uh, next tier foreign policy and national interest uh, priorities for China, including uh, the South China Sea, the East China Sea, uh, and, and all the rest of it. And he's certainly not surrendering any of those ambitions at all. Yeah. Good to see you. Even if it is far away this time, um, we'll talk again next week. Thanks, Pete. Pleasure.